this is actually what I look like after I shower. My hair does puff up, just you wait. Hey guys, so I am here tonight. Excuse the lighting. I did not know that there was no light bulb there, so I cannot turn on the lights and everybody's gone, so basically I'm alone right now and I don't know how to put on a light bulb. It's snowing! It started snowing yesterday. I'm so happy about that for like two seconds. When I go out, I will be very, very upset. I do not actually like snow. Only like when I'm indoors, I actually do enjoy the snow. I am going to be talking about a experience that I have. This is going to be my first story time video for you guys. And this is called, I almost died. Yeah, I'm starting off with a bang when it comes to story time videos. Here we go. I'm telling you this story today because it is like the anniversary of what happened nine years ago. I was eight years old. This was after turning eight years old. So I was in Ecuador most of the time that I was supposed to be in grade three. My sister was 10. My grandmother died, so my mom took us to Ecuador and we stayed there for six months. And my dad came back after a month of staying there because he needed to come back to Canada to work. My mom took my sister and I to a carnival. She took us to a mini carnival to celebrate New Year's. So that's actually why I'm telling you guys a story because it is New Year's. And there were only two rides in that carnival. There were both Ferris wheels. One was bigger than the other one. One was actually for adults and the other one was for more for kids. The thing is with like size and all that stuff is that Canadians are actually taller than the average Ecuadorian. My sister and I were pretty tall kids compared to the Ecuadorian kids. We were just tall people, especially my sister. Like she was a lot taller, above average height. I was actually like average. I wasn't even the tallest kid in my school when I was in Canada, but in Ecuador, I was the tallest kid. So that actually comes into play with what I'm gonna talk to you guys about. My sister, my mom, and I, we got on the big Ferris wheel. We had a great time. It was awesome. I loved it, and I usually don't go on many rides. I actually enjoyed it, and then my mom was like, do you guys want to get on the small Ferris wheel for kids? So we were like, sure. That was going to be like our last thing to do before we went back home and count it down, because it actually is not a good idea to stay out late in Ecuador. Because it's very dangerous, especially in New Year's. There's a lot of parties and a lot of drunk people outside, you know. Not bashing on anybody specifically, but that is actually the truth. Even like normal days, it's very, very dangerous to leave and be outside like even past 8 o'clock. We weren't really that used to it, but we were there for like about three months by that time. My mom put us on that small ferris wheel i was in a different cart than my sister so she was a little bit ahead of me everybody else that actually got on the ride like they shared the cart we didn't share a cart we were just in a single cart i forgot to say when i got on the cart the man that manages the ferris wheel he told me to, to grab on to the circle bar in the middle of the f cart so i did Thankfully, I never let go of that thing. I got on and I started going, holding on to that for dear life because even in small rides, even in the smallest ride, I will grab onto anything to keep myself secure. And that Ferris wheel did not have seatbelts. Do other Ferris wheels have seatbelts? I guess they have that little bar thing that secures you, like the big one did, but the small one didn't. You just had to hold on to that bar. I held on to it, it was at the top, and then I started going down, and I saw my sister, she was already like going on her second turn, second round, and she was like here, I was here, and my sister was here. I looked down and see that she was there, and she was actually one of the last things that I saw before I blacked out. I felt that my cart started to tip over. I started screaming my head off because I did not know what was happening. I felt the cart start to tip over. I felt like the Ferris wheel was about to tip over and I started screaming my brains off on that ride. I gripped onto that thing as hard as possible and then I blacked out. Remember not remembering anything. I remember just seeing black. And that was like actually the first experience that I had blacking out 
and the last experience, thankfully. I blacked out. I remember waking up, like waking up or opening my eyes to when I was at the bottom by now. The man that managed the Ferris wheel, he took me down. Even the, the door that was supposed to be securely locked on the Ferris wheel, like on the cart, was unlocked. I don't know how that happened, really. He took me down and my mom was immediately scared to death she was there she hugged me and i started crying like crazy my nose and my head hurt i think i actually did hit my head and hit my nose i don't know how i hit my nose though unless i hit it on front in front of the bar thing my nose is very very sensitive because i had surgery on it when i was four years old hitting my nose was a very very big deal for me i started bleeding and my head hurt like crazy. My mom asked the guy, the guy that managed the Ferris wheel, to take down my sister immediately. Parents there also asked the guy to take down their kids. I felt super shocked that that happened to me and I wasn't expecting, obviously I wasn't expecting anything like that to happen. But like that was the end and that I was gonna die on that Ferris wheel and that I had nothing else left because I felt the whole thing tipping over but it actually didn't thankfully my sister did not see any of that she did not see what happened she didn't know until she saw that they were bringing her down so she didn't actually see anything that happened to me my mom told me that she was wandering around like that area of the ferris wheel looking around like normal and she thought we were secure up there obviously <laughs> she heard the parents of the kids yelling saying oh my gosh look at that girl she's she's hanging off the the cart i was still inside the cart and so my mom turns around and she sees that it's me she's like you know like i don't know how her reaction was but it was probably like she was gonna faint she immediately ran up to the guy told him to take me down my head facing down and my legs were like facing up it was like i was like this so my head was here my legs were here the card had actually tipped over but i was still hanging on to it i was blacked out which was the weirdest thing screaming my head off that's what everybody was saying was that i was screaming my head off but i don't remember screaming my head off i remember starting to scream before blacking out after that i didn't want to go on any rides ever again like that's what i felt like the fact that this happened on new year's i almost didn't make it to the new year that's what i felt like at eight years old 2007 when i came back here i didn't want to go on any ferris wheels again my sister forced me to go on a ferris wheel here the ferris wheels here i guess would be more safer but the fact that i was bigger than average like i was a lot taller than the other kids that i would cause my car to tip over. I don't know. Like that car was pretty unsafe for it to open the door even. And my sister was a lot bigger, a lot taller than me, and her car didn't tip over. I had to suffer the consequences for everything. I was about probably eight or nine when I went back on a Ferris wheel again. Probably nine. I waited like a year and then I went back on. I got over my fear of being on Ferris wheels because I was in Canada again and I've always felt a lot safer when I'm home. That was my story. That was my experience of almost dying in a Ferris wheel. I always like to tell this story just because I never had a death experience prior or after this. Just because this is, this is the new year, I wanted to tell you guys my experience of my new year in 2006 going into 2007. I hope you guys enjoy this. This is my first ever story time video and I'm sorry that I had to do this in the dark but because there's no light bulb, there's no source of light other than my like my flashlights and stuff like that. Love you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it and comment below if you guys have any near-death experiences, any stories you guys want to tell me, any requests, anything. Subscribe for more Girl Meets World videos, for more story time videos, for more tag videos, for more all of that. And I love you guys so much, as I already said. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!